Hi, I'm Dave Darlington. Welcome to my studio bass hit recording here in Manhattan. And today I want to talk about an exciting new plugin from Waves called F6 Dynamic EQ. So let's look at some real world examples of how this, this might be useful. Let's say you have a vocalist who's particularly harsh, but only at certain points. She belts a certain note or there's a certain range in her vocal that's not pleasant, but is not there all the time. On a static EQ, if you cut that out, it's gone for the whole song, and it can make actually make the vocal sound dull if you're trying to avoid that harshness. We can use a dynamic EQ here to just maybe find the frequency that's not so pleasant and get rid of it just a little bit when it becomes problematic. So I'm going to solo the vocal. So first of all, we're going we're gonna to find the point that we don't like. right there where it starts to bite. Then we'll set the threshold so that it reacts only at, only when she's a little too strident. So you can see on those those hard bright vowels, we can live and change. It's grabbing that 2500 and you can see it attenuating a little bit, not a lot, because I don't want it to be too audible. I want her to sound consistent throughout her performance. But this is a nice way of just adding a little makeup that takes away those harsh frequencies that, that might bite through a mix, especially if it's being played on a big system in a club, let's say, and you, you're standing next to those horns when that vocal comes through, that's the kiss of death. So this just puts that, that, nice, that nice light on her and gets rid of any harshness. You see how she seems to sit better throughout the track and doesn't poke through on those on those harsh vowels. So that's what I call um, taming. We're taming those upper mid frequencies that are not so good. Let's say I wanted to add a little bit of a shine to the lead vocal, get some air, pretty typical thing to do, boost some highs. But now her sibilances are starting to be affected. There's, there's too much. So we can use a band to actually statically boost. You see I'm adding, let's say, a, gain, a dB, a dB and a half of 8K. But I'm also attenuating using the dynamic controls. If there's a sibilance or something that crosses a point where I feel it's too much, I'm actually reducing it. It might, in the long run, make it go back to zero, but it's taking away the idea of accentuating those S's and T's and K's and things like that when you're, when you're looking for air. We started out. So when you, when you hear her S in start, you see that white line that shows my EQ curve. The dynamic part of band six is going down just for the S, but then it relaxes and we're getting the air above 8K on the voice anytime she's not doing something sibilant. We started out small together. This is a really good example of how the dynamic works. It's really quick. And if I made it even, if I moved the attack to even quicker um, in manual, it would, it would be get in and out of those S's and T's. Sometimes I used to go through the audio and automate the S's down, you know, trim the, trim the, um, the actual audio region and, and lower it or automate my EQ to do that or stack a bunch of DSers, which sometimes are a little too heavy handed. This is a really, really accurate way of getting in there surgically and solving problems. Now let's get to the side chaining part of it, which is where some really interesting stuff can be done. Let's say she's having a little trouble cutting through the track. Well, we know that the main part of the vocal is in the middle uh, of the frequency range, and it's also in the middle of the stereo field. So what if we side chain all the music with a send from the vocal, and whenever she's singing, we just kind of dip down those frequencies where that vocal would be, you know, the, the big synth pads, maybe the strings, maybe guitars, whatever it might be in your music. So you can see here, I have this on the track bus. I bust all the, all the entire track to a certain um, auxiliary fader, and I, I put the F6 here, and um, we'll mute the vocal so we can just hear the music and solo. That also soloed the input, so you could see that I put the frequency where I most heard mo mo most of her vocal energy. Internal a sidechain source would react to the music that's coming through this the um, plug-in. 
whereas external I can assign it you can see up here where I have assigned it to my um, an aux called Vox Trigger so every time she sings and I put this on external it's uh, reacting to the vocal not the music that's coming through and also this split and wide Split means it's reacting to the particular frequencies of the single band EQ, whereas wide would react to the threshold level of the entire spectrum of, of frequencies, not just the one band that you're working on. So we're going to be split split mode, so we only want these frequencies here at band 4, and we're going to be external, so we're reacting to her vocal. We started out. So the more the lower the threshold and the more range, you'll hear the pianos and synths go, go quieter. I'm exaggerating that to get to show you how it's getting them out of the way. And that's reacting when she sings. We started out small together. If I lessen that, we don't want it to be quite so obvious, but we want to get the music out of the way of her vocals so she can sail on top of it. We started out together No big and And again, it's only working on the mid band, so it, all, the, all the echoes and stuff that's on the side of the reverb of the piano and all that is not really being affected, but the core of that piano part is, is uh, just tipping out. I wouldn't overuse it, but I'm getting it out to 3 dB in that, in that 2500, well actually 1600 range. Let's go to the chorus and see how that works on the chorus. You can hear how it helps the vocal just sit right on top of that music. It's, the track still sounds big. It's, it's almost not really affecting the track too much. It's just carving out a little bit of a range in, right in the middle of where her vocal would be competing with that stuff. So you still get the sense of the pianos and the synths and the strings, and there's all that stuff still on the sides, but she's sailing right over the top. And after all, it's really about your artist. It's not really about your piano, is it? I invented a little too loud crash so I can show you a good way to deal with extra high-end frequencies. Let's say you, you have a nice ride cymbal going the whole time and every once in a while this drummer just wails into that crash. So if you roll off the EQ, the ride cymbal is going to disappear. But we want to just tame the crash. So you can I have this on the drums, dialed in at a, about 3K and I have a, lar a large range. So it's, if, if it goes across the threshold, it's really going to bring it down. Let's see what that sounds like in solo. As you watch the graph, you can see that I'm taking a little bit off the top of the kick, which is okay with me. I don't necessarily want that, that smack part of the kick. But when that crash cymbal hits, which was too loud in his overall thing, you can see it really reacts. And you could also put this this is EDM drums, so they're programmed. But if it was a live drummer with a stereo set of cymbals, you could set that to sides and attenuate that crash cymbal on the sides and let everything else in the middle just peek right through. So like I said, I haven't run into a problem that I really can't solve with the F6 Dynamic EQ. And I hope you'll um, find some other applications to use it in your music, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Yeah.